extra space storage stock, ticker symbol EXR. This stock is down 11% on the one year chart, underperforming the S&P 500. But as of lately, the stock is really getting some momentum. On the 7th of November, extra space storage stock reported earnings with a beat on FFO, but a miss on revenue, although it was almost in line with expectations. People love EXR stock because of multiple reasons, and one of the main thing being the dividend. And I understand why with dividend yield at almost 4% and a great growth track record. So could this be the perfect time to buy EXR stock? I'm very excited to see what you guys think about this stock, so please let me know your thoughts in the comments. My name is Thomas and this is Thomas Invest. I'm an investor looking for great stocks at great prices. So what does EXR do? Extra space storage rents storage units including climate control units, drive up units, lockers, boat storage, RV storage and business storage under the brands Extra Space Storage, Life Storage and Storage Express. When we dive in the most recent earnings report we see that net income per share was $0.96 a 41.8% decrease year over year, primarily due to the live storage merger. FFO was reported at $1.69 per share, down 8.6% year over year. To me this is a disappointing number, since this is one of the most important numbers with REITs. Same store revenue increased 1.9%, which is really good. And EXR also closed the merger with Live Storage, where they add over 1200 new stores to their portfolio. In here we see that the same store growth for EXR has exceeded the storage sector average. We also see that in 2021 and 2022 the numbers heavily increased compared to historical averages. And with the acquisition of Live Storage, EXR is the biggest storage read in the US which is really awesome. In total, almost 1900 properties are owned, while 471 are joint venture, and almost 1300 properties are managed. Another interesting thing is that the core FFO is growing at a much higher rate for EXR than the closest competitors, so this is also looking really good. In here we see a really important number, the net debt to EBITDA. I prefer a range of 5 to 6.5, and right now it is sitting at 5, looking pretty good to me. Another important number is the ratings. They have B ratings right now, and to be honest, I prefer A ratings here, so that is something to keep in mind. The occupancy rate is also looking really good at almost 94%, and for a storage read, this is a great number. In here we see that EXR is consistently growing at a nice rate in terms of branded stores. And now that we know more about the company, it is time to check the fundamentals of this stock. But first, if you made it this far into the video, I want to thank you a lot for watching this video. Make sure to subscribe to my channel to receive multiple analysis every week. And also join my Discord channel for free to meet other people within the community and to talk about stocks. It's completely free, so don't miss it out. Let's continue with diving into the fundamentals. EXR is a 34.7 billion market cap company. PE ratio is not a fair metric to use with REITs, so I'll be using the price to FFO instead. Right now it is sitting at 21, indicating they might be overvalued. Later in this video I will show you my 3 price targets for EXR stock, so make sure to watch until the end because price to FFO is only telling a small part of the full story here. Revenue is at 2.27 billion and in this graph we see that revenue went up in the long run. It has to be said that for a read it is growing really steady and consistent. We see that margins are going up in the long run, which is a great thing. However, most recently margins are coming down a lot, so keep an eye on that number. EPS is showing similar trends as the margin and the revenue. For a read, it looks pretty decent. Analysis expect 2024 and 2025 to be great years in terms of EPS growth. But somehow 2026 is going to be a tough year, 
and after that it is expected to see high single digit EPS growth. For the revenue it is looking a bit more consistent with high growth in 2024, up until 2026, and from 2027 on they expect to see mid single digits. Return on assets is sitting at almost 6% which is a decent number for a read. Return on equity is looking really good and the most important number, return on invested capital is sitting at 2.8%, which is a low number, even for a REIT. It is also lower versus the 5 year average, so that is something to keep your eye on. Current ratio is at 0.5, which is a low number for a REIT. Nothing special to mention here, historically it looks pretty steady to me. Right now extra space storage has 11 billion in debt. And I prefer companies that can pay down at least a big chunk of their total debt with the total cash. EXR has 264 million in total cash, so they can't pay down a big chunk of their total debt. This is something that I don't like. And to be honest, this could be a potential red flag to me. So it's very important that free cash flow is growing, since this is used to pay down debt of course, but also to buy back shares, pay dividends and a lot of things. And here we see that free cash flow is going up in the long run, which is a great thing. Shares outstanding are increasing, which is very common for REIT, since they increase shares to raise capital. Also keep in mind that the recent increase is due to the merger with LSI. But when shares outstanding are decreasing, it increases your ownership in the company, increases the EPS, lowers the PE ratio and makes it easier to maintain and increase the dividends. And since we're talking about dividends anyways, dividend yield is sitting at 4% which is a great number. Animal payout is at $6.48 and payout ratio is at 80%, which is above the 75% average for REITs, but it is nearly there. The 5 year growth rate is at 14% which is a great number, and on top of that EXR increased the dividends for 13 years in a row. In here we see the dividend growth since 2012. EXR likes to increase the dividends at a high rate. To me this looks really good. And in this graph we see the expected dividends for 2024 and 2025. Of course this is an estimation that can be highly impacted by results, but it gives you a rough indication. It's expected to grow slowly from here. Overall these dividends look pretty good to me, but how about the historical returns? I decided to compare EXR stock with the overall market, in this case the S&P 500. Next to that I added PSA and Cube. On the 5 year chart we see that EXR returned 121% including dividends, beating the S&P 500 sitting at 110%. Both PSA and Cube underperformed the S&P 500, but they were really close. On the 1 year chart it looks pretty interesting with EXR returning only 19% versus the S&P 500 sitting at 26%. Cube has the highest return with 27%. On the 6 month chart it is EXR having the highest return again. The S&P 500 is sitting at the bottom of this list with 7% return. And on the 1 month chart it is again EXR with the highest return. So bottom line, EXR beats the S&P 500 on the 5 year chart, and also the closest competitors. On top of that, it looks like the stock is getting some momentum as of lately. So could this be the perfect time to buy EXR stock? Well, let's check the 3 price targets that are created using the Everything Money software, which is one of the best tools out there. I'm using a low, mid and high assumption to get the 3 price targets, starting off with revenue growth. For the revenue growth I'm filling in 6, 8 and 10%, based on historical performance, their own outlook, but also because of the analysis. For the profit margin I'm filling in 33, 35 and 37%, and for the free cash flow margin I'm putting in 56, 58 and 60%. For the PE ratio I'm putting in 20 since it is a read, and for the price of free cash flow I'm putting in 18, 19 and 20, since they have somewhat of a mode in my opinion. My desired annual return is 12.5%, since I can get an easy 10% average annual return with owning an ETF. Right now, EXR stock is at $160. I hit analyze, 
and we see a lot of red numbers. And since this is a read, I'm only focusing on the discounted cash flow value. We have a low price target of $108, which is a big drop from the current stock price. We have a mid price target of almost $135, and we have a high price target of almost $167. To me, the mid to high price target is the most justified here, indicating that this stock is kinda overvalued. My final conclusion on this stock is that I love the business. It's one of my favorite reads in my current portfolio and with reason. They are increasing at a steady and consistent rate and are the biggest storage read in the US. Most fundamentals look really great and dividends are also looking amazing. From a value point of view, I don't think you can get the best deal at current prices. I'm not saying it is overvalued, but it is sitting at the top of the range of the high price target. So for now, I will be collecting the dividends and wait for the stock price to come down a little bit before buying new shares. And since I bought a while ago during the dip, I'm okay with that. And remember to always do your own research and never fully trust on what I or other YouTubers say about the stock. I'm not a financial advisor and this content is just for entertaining purposes only. I hope you liked this video and I did bring some insights of the company to you. I'd really appreciate a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to get notified when I'm posting a new video. Thanks for watching and I will see you in my next video.